CREM 2 Morning News begins now. The Williams Flats fire on the Cobble Reservation is now 20% contained. The fire, though, has continued to grow. Plus, today all eyes are on the air quality as we head toward the afternoon. We're expecting winds to shift in direction. Find out if that could mean moderate or even worse air quality around our region. Here at 530, welcome back to CREM 2 Morning News. Great to have you with us today. I'm Jen York. And I'm Evan Nirani. It is Monday morning and uh, we had a quite a busy weekend uh, as far as fire containment, smoke around the region mm -hmm. went. Uh, I don't know if you noticed on Saturday, we saw quite a bit of smoke around us. I know. I think everyone is saying, oh, smoke season has finally arrived. Knock on wood, we're hoping it doesn't get terribly bad like we've seen in the past couple years. but. I think everyone's prepared now saying, you know, when is it going to be? You know, when is it going to arrive? Exactly. Saw it kind of move in and was like, oh, first week of August, here we are. Uh, you know, last year yeah. it was like the whole month of August brought smoke to yeah. us. And so curious to see, of course, where this uh, month leads. Uh, but so far, as we mentioned, uh, we're OK in the good range right now. Well, that's quality. great. That's yeah, good exactly. news on a Monday morning. A great start to the day. Yeah. We're at 45 on that air quality index. The problem is that toward the afternoon we could move into the moderate range. Now, moderate doesn't mean the worst conditions. Moderate really still keeps us generally OK. But uh, as we move toward unhealthy for sensitive groups or just unhealthy, well, that's that's when we start to encounter some problems. So of course, right now we're in the good range and we're hoping that it stays that way over the next several hours. Now, as far as watches and warnings go, nothing is in effect. We don't have any red flag warnings, no fire weather watches. That's likely because we don't have too much wind in our area for this afternoon. Things are going to be staying generally calm as far as wind goes. But what we will see is a change in the wind direction. That wind could shift and move towards us here, the northeast of Colville. Uh, so it really depends on where the afternoon goes and just how strong the wind is as to whether or not it'll move in our direction this afternoon. Another thing to note on here is we do have a few showers moving through about the central panhandle. That's just around the Grangeville area moving toward about Missoula. Now, hour by hour, temperatures in Spokane are going to make their way to about 93 degrees. Sunny skies all the way through the day. 93 degrees will be that afternoon high. Parts of central Washington expecting upper 90s and even triple digits on the map. Now, as we head toward your Tuesday and Wednesday, even warmer temperatures are expected. I'll tell you what to expect by the time we get there. Coming up in just a bit, Jen. Evan, thank you. It is 532 now. The Williams Flats fire on the Colville Reservation is now 20% contained. It is producing, though, a lot of smoke that we can smell here in the Spokane area. The fire is now more than 10,000 acres in size. So far, crews have saved some structures and cultural resources. Investigators say lightning sparked that fire last week. For updates and more information, you can visit our website, creme.com, or you can download the new CREM2 mobile app. Here are the top stories that you need to know before starting your day. A three-hour-long standoff in the Perry District this weekend ended in an arrest. Authorities arrested a 39-year-old man on assault and arson charges. They say he was holding a family member hostage with a knife. No injuries are reported. A driver is facing charges this morning after leading Washington State Patrol troopers on a high-speed chase. It happened Saturday in Columbia County. Authorities arrested a female suspect who jumped out of the car. They say the driver then armed herself with a gun. Authorities opened fire hitting the woman. They took her into custody as well, and she was treated for her injuries. The Lick Creek Fire in North Idaho has burned 200 acres. The wildfire burning eight miles uh, is burning eight miles rather southwest of Avery. Right now, we do not have containment numbers. According to the National Wildfire Coordinating Group, the fire started on Friday. 120 personnel are helping fight the wildfire. The cause is still unknown. For more information on that fire, you can go to our website, creme.com. 20 people died and 26 others were injured in a mass shooting Saturday in El Paso, Texas. Justice Department leaders are treating the shooting as a domestic terrorism case. Police say the 21-year-old suspect posted a racist anti-immigrant manifesto online. The state of Texas is currently seeking the death penalty for the gunman. Well, less than 24 hours after the El Paso shooting, a gunman opened fire in Dayton, Ohio. Nine people died and 27 others were injured. As of last night, one person was still in critical condition. One of those who died was the gunman's sister. Police shot and killed the suspect in a matter of seconds. They say he was wearing a ballistic vest, a mask, and hearing protection while armed with an assault rifle. Authorities are still investigating a motive for that shooting. 
Well, when something as terrible as a mass shooting happens, it's almost instinct now to go online and join in the conversations on social media. And the recent multiple shootings are making that urge to talk, read, and communicate even stronger. But we want to urge a sense of caution at times like these because with the conversation comes a lot of claims. We have our Verify team working right now to figure out what's true and false. Here is our Jason Puckett. Not only are some viral claims false, some of them actively seek to change the conversation or mislead. Like these two examples we've seen online after the major shootings this weekend. This is an article posted on Gateway Pundit with tens of thousands of shares and its core claim is being repeated across social media. Now it claims the El Paso shooter's information has been changed online and suggests it was done for political purposes. But there's a problem. It bases this claim off screenshots from mylife.com. It's a site that gives basic information on pretty much anyone in the country based off public records, social media platforms, and more. But it can literally be changed by anyone. You can watch us do it. We loaded that same page from the article. It now says he's an African-American Republican. A few clicks, and I've changed it to say he's a Caucasian Democrat and that he's agnostic. Save it, refresh it, and my changes are still there. So what does this mean? Well, it means any claims about a shooter's motives, political affiliations, religion, income, or really any information at all coming from mylife.com can't be trusted. The information on the shooter's pages can be manipulated by anyone for any reason. And sites like Gateway Pundit are sharing that false information and building a narrative around it. Bottom line, claims based off mylife.com data are false. Next, a post you may be seeing a lot right now. That with the shootings this weekend, the U.S. is now up to 249 or 250 mass shootings in 2019 alone. This claim is true, but it needs context. While the FBI has a definition for mass killing, there's actually no legal definition for a mass shooting. So that number changes based on your source. The 250 plus comes from the Gun Violence Archive. Now their database does show more than 250 mass shootings in 2019, but that's from their own definition. On their site, if four or more victims were shot, they consider it a mass shooting period. They don't base it off deaths, location, or any other context. So gang violence and even accidental discharges could be included. But if you use the FBI definition of a mass killing, now it's three or more people killed, the number drops from 250 to about 30. That's a massive difference. The El Paso shooting was the deadliest this year, and the Dayton shooting is the third deadliest. Now, it's not fair to compare shootings, but the 250 number does need context. There haven't been 250 shootings this year as deadly as what we saw this weekend. Before you share something like these, send us an email and let us verify for you if they're true. With your verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Jason, thank you. In total, 29 people died in mass shootings this weekend in the U.S. 20 people from the Walmart shooting in El Paso and nine people from the shooting in Dayton, Ohio. Crim 2's Dana Marie McNichol is joining us in studio now to break down the response online. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. It was a devastating weekend for the victims and their families and their community. The world has been sharing and mourning in prayer, especially over social media, and many political figures and celebrities have been, have been responding to the tragedy. I want to extend our condolences to the people. President Trump has expressed his sadness for both the El Paso and Dayton communities following this weekend's mass shootings. Trump took to Twitter to say, God bless the people of both El Paso and Dayton, and the White House flags will be lowered half staff until Thursday, August 8th. So grateful to be alive under this beautiful sky, in this beautiful city, with all of these beautiful people, who I believe are the example to the rest of this country at this moment of truth. Presidential candidate and former Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke is hoping to find reasons for optimism and positivity for his hurting community. He also has called out President Trump in saying, Trump invites hatred and racism into our country that offends and changes us as a country. And Governor Jay Inslee also responded on Twitter this weekend. He wrote, words have failed us. Words do not protect us. Every day that passes without action is another day we fail to prevent families and communities from experiencing profound loss and tragedy. Not just for mass shootings, but from all forms of gun violence, including suicide, domestic violence, homicides, and more. 
Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson is facing criticism for a tweet comparing the number of people killed in two mass shootings to those who have died in other causes such as the flu or car accidents. This is part of his tweet where he has gone the most criticism. Some has perceived his tweet as insensitive. He ends his tweet with, often our emotions respond more to spectacle than data. We offer our deepest condolences to all the victims this morning. It's a hard story to cover. For right now, we'll send it back to you, Jen. Dane Marie, thank you so much. That's your Rush Block, today's big headlines from the Inland Northwest and beyond. You can let us know what's happening in your neighborhood. Just send us a message on the CREM2 Facebook page. It is 540 now. A local Little League team is heading to regionals this morning. In the next 10 minutes, how the team is making a national name for itself for the second year in a row.